long, January of 2019, he will be replaced. But Trey Gowdy is a pretty serious guy at this point. This South Carolina congressman built a strong reputation as a no-nonsense prosecutor, even though he probably really didn't get anything done. But before bringing his skills to Washington, even he couldn't keep a straight face after hearing Democrat Senator Chuck Schumer and what he just declared. According to Gowdy, every prosecutor has jurisdictional boundaries. This does take down the claims of the Democrats, as they say that Mueller should have unlimited freedom with almost no oversight. Every prosecutor has jurisdictional boundaries, according to Gowdy. This shoots down the Democrats' claim that Mueller should have unlimited freedom with almost no oversight. Gowdy continued by stating that he doesn't know a single prosecutor that does not have boundaries and Mueller's jurisdictional boundaries were set by Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein. And if we're going to be realistic, which almost everyone now acknowledges, is that Mueller's probe has dragged on much longer and unearthed surprisingly nothing that even Trump's critics expected if there was really any real evidence or misdeeds that Mueller should have laid it out to the American people by now. But this cannot go on forever, especially with no oversight. It's time to wrap it up. And Sessions' departure is likely the push button that was needed to make this happen. With South Carolina Republican Congressman Trey Gowdy, who sits on the Judiciary and Intelligence Committees and chairs the Oversight and Government Reform Committee. Congressman, thanks for being here. Yes, sir. Your thoughts of this news? It was going to happen. Uh, I knew it was going to happen after the election. I did not think it would happen before all the votes had been counted. Um, but uh, he's been a proverbial dead man walking for several months now, Brett. Yeah, you know, Chuck Schumer had a real problem with the acting attorney general. Take a listen. Our paramount view is that any attorney general, whether this one or another one, should not be able to interfere with the Mueller investigation in any way. They should not be able to end it. They should not be able to limit it. They should not be able to interfere with uh, Mueller going forward and doing what he thinks is the right thing. And that will help guide us as we go through this process. So their concern is that Matt Whitaker is going to do that. Is that your concern? Uh, no, Brett. Every prosecutor has jurisdictional boundaries. I don't know a single prosecutor that does not. And Mueller's jurisdictional boundaries were set by Rod Rosenstein in the memo that you have seen, and they were altered, amended in the memo that we have not seen. But there's never been a prosecutor that just had unfettered power to go investigate whatever the heck he or she wanted to do. If you're a state prosecutor, you can't investigate federal crimes. If you're in New York, you can't investigate things in Idaho. So the notion that we're going to create a special counsel that has no boss, no jurisdictional strictures at all, um, is just typical Chuck Schumer. And, and I, I think it's why so few people take him seriously. Well, what about the deputy attorney general, Rod Rose, Rosenstein, and his role here? One would have assumed that the deputy, that's why he's a deputy, if the attorney general is not there, would step in as acting. Uh, you would. These are interesting times that we're in. Um, uh, Rod Rosenstein, um, I was ready to question him. I had 37 pages worth of questions for him, Brett, a couple of weeks ago. Um, of course, he is uh, alleged to have uh, wanted to invoke the 25th Amendment and question the president's fitness for office. So I'm not sure that would have been the right um, pick, but he is overseeing the Mueller probe right now. I don't think anything's going to happen to Rod until after Mueller finishes his investigation. And then what happens after that will be between the president and Rod. Rosenstein uh, had a meeting today at the White House, scheduled to be there tomorrow. Do you have any sense when Mueller moves forward with anything? Do you have any timeline? I, I don't, and, and I'd be really disappointed if anyone did. I mean, Mueller, for whatever other shortcomings people perceive that he has, he, I think he's tried to do a pretty good job of keeping his business private. Um, I have not seen a single piece of evidence that suggests collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia. I, I know Schiff has. I know some journalists claim they have. 
But I've seen nothing, and no one's interviewed more witnesses than I have. So I think Mueller is going to issue an exhaustive report on what Russia did, which should unify America. And then he's going to disappoint CNN and all my Democrat friends by saying there's no evidence of collusion. That's what I think he's going to do, and I think it'll happen before the end of the year. But I don't know that. Mr. Chairman, do you think that acting Attorney General Whitaker could expand the investigation uh, the other way into looking at the FBI, the early parts of the investigation uh, from inside the administration? Well, he could. You know, Chairman Goodlatte and I wrote um, a long time ago, we wrote Attorney General Sessions and said, we think, uh, reluctantly, but we think there ought to be a second special counsel. And I say that as somebody who used to work for the Department of Justice and wants to see that institution restored to its greatness. But I think there ought to be a second special counsel to look at the origins of the Russia probe and the way the FBI conducted itself. I mean, Chairman Goodlatte and I have been investigating to the extent we can without a grand jury and without compulsory process. We've been looking at what we can, and I am deeply troubled Is by it? what the department and the bureau did. And I think another special counsel is warranted, and I thought that months ago. Is it more likely that that happens with the acting Attorney General Whitaker than not? Well, my chances were zero with Sessions because he said no. So not to quote the movie Dumb and Dumber, but I, I guess it's one in a million. I, I guess it's better than it was with Sessions. The, the President Trump nearly did. He said he would do it, and then it didn't happen. That needs to go ahead. And then they further made a point, which I really want your take on, Sarah, which is that, I, I'm just quoting from the Wall Street Journal here, Mr. Trump should revisit his decision, the decision to renege on the release of the documents, and help Mr. Nunes and House Republicans finish the job in the lame duck session of revealing the truth about the misuse of intelligence and the FISA court. In the 100 percent, the president needs to revisit this. Uh, he had made the decision to declassify both the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. That was the warrant against Carter Page. That's what the FBI sought to spy on him. The 302s, Bruce Orr's 302s, those are the interviews mm -hmm. that the FBI conducted with Bruce Orr, and those are very detailed. And most importantly, Steve, most importantly is the Gang of Eight notebook, the Gang of Eight dossier, because it, uh, according to the sources that I've spoken with, that really lays out the exculpatory evidence that was left out from, right. from the secret court. So the secret court was denied information. We already know that they weren't told about Hillary Clinton. It was yeah. a footnote. Uh, we, you know, that the fact that she had paid for the dossier, right, through Fusion GPS. So Mark Elias, the same firm in Broward County, right, the same attorney, was behind. Perkins I know, it's Cooey. crazy. I know, they're Perkins everywhere. Cooey. Okay. It's like they're all Can I just ask you just quickly, Sarah, do you know why he went back on the decision to... Yeah. I think I do. Uh, there was a private meeting between, and this has happened quite often, uh, Rod Rosenstein, and remember this is before he found out and mm -hmm. all of us found out that James Baker had said that Rod Rosenstein wanted to wear a wire on the president and record mm -hmm. him and invoke the 25th Amendment, mm -hmm. that that's what he had heard from Andrew McCabe. What had happened was Rod Rosenstein went to the White House and people at the DOJ began pushing back against the president vigorously vigorously saying, look, if you release these documents, I mean, it's going to look like obstruction. You're going to hurt the Russia case that's going on right now. And then he had some calls, apparently. Apparently, there were calls from allies. Now, what I was told was that they just went directly to the Department of Justice. The allies called there. Rod Rosenstein warned the president, look, we've got Great Britain right. and Australia. They don't want you. That to sounds like the deep state sort of fighting well, back. Absolutely, because we. But he's know. got to. Do you think he will overturn it? Just very quickly. I absolutely do. I Great. think the president should, and I think he will. I think that's what. Tammy, what's your take on all this? Yeah, look, over the next two years is going to be this the kind of rhetoric, uh, lies versus uh, transparency, and revealing records like this. It's going to be a series of Kavanaugh type hearings. They're going to make things up. They're going to make false allegations. The American oh. people won't like it. But in the in the meantime, you've got the politics of that. But the president's interest is, in fact, helping the country. And one of the things we've learned that we never would have known uh, if anybody else had been elected is the kind of corruption at the FBI that was unfolding. And that wasn't yes. new, that it had to have been on, of course, ongoing and that it just simply became apparent to us. So part of his promise uh, is to help us uh, back up onto our feet off of our knees. And, and declassifying those documents is going to be key to doing that because, look, it's, it's the Department mm -hmm. of Justice. And it, this is an argument for Trey Gowdy to be considered seriously 
considering his knowledge of the investigations that have gone on in the House, for him to become attorney general, um, uh, because we've got to be able to continue this, because this is part of uh, uh, us getting up out of the hospital bed. Very interesting. Thanks, Tommy. I'm sorry, not much time, Charlie. Quick the Senate, you st we still control the Senate. Why not, Senator Burr? It's all up to you. Why don't you do these investigations like the House did?